Hello and welcome to another fun tutorial on how to build a thing. And uh, this time the thing we're going to build is a cockpit plugin. Um, this is where we all get to enjoy Niall's amazing front end skills, which um, aren't good, they're fine. But luckily that means if I'm such at a bad level, it can, anyone can be able to make these cockpit plugins. So let's find out what we'll be doing. But first, of course, let me introduce myself. I am Niall Deacon. I'm a developer advocate with Commanda, and I do all sorts of fun stuff like build these tutorials and help on the forum and all sorts of talks and things. But more importantly, everyone wants to know, we have here Morgendorfer, one of my favorite Harris's Hawks. Definitely my top five and certainly the person and hawk I turn to most often when I need some JavaScript skills. So what will happen today? Well, we're going to deploy a simple process. We're then going to create a custom cockpit button. So this is cockpit already exists as a front end application for um, Commanda and the engine. And we're going to add to that because I would quite like to start a process instance with a button in cockpit and also update the view after I start it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, that's what I want to do. Morgendorfer has requested we add a corgi, a small little dog at some point. Morgendorfer likes dogs and I have no problem doing this so we're also going to make sure a corgi is somehow involved. So the question is what will you need to get started? Well you'll need Java runtime installed. You will also need the Tomcat distribution of Commanda. This tutorial will differ depending on the distribution you use so the Tomcat one is what I'll be using. And also you need the Commanda modeler and some kind of JavaScript editor because Cockpit is written in JavaScript and our plugin will also be written in JavaScript. And I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, but it doesn't really matter as long as you're happy with your development environment. Below this video is a link to a, um, a lovely GitHub repo that contains a readme describing everything we're about to do in detail. Um, so you can use this to follow along as well. It also, in the source folder here, contains every step of this plugin that we'll be doing. So I would suggest that you go to this location and you download this um, uh, or you uh, copy this folder locally so that you can follow along easier with the tutorial. So that's available. The link for this is available below. And uh, yeah, this is a good place to start. I would actually like to begin by helping you guys get what you need to get started. And that starts at commanda.com. And while I assume everyone can download Java and get that running in pretty easily enough, I want to show you where to get the distros we'll be using today. So on Commander.com you have a download button that we can go to, and there you have straight away the community platform. We'll be using this zip file here of the Tomcat distro that Commander suggests. If you're using a different operating system, you can use the uh, tar file. Um, also, you will need the modeler for some quick deployment, and you can find that right here as well. And both are free and open source to use, so it shouldn't be a problem. So once both of those are downloaded and ready to go, we can then start the fun thing of starting them up to make sure that we are ready to build our plugin. So after the download, we now have a file that we want to unzip. There it is in all its glory, and I have already gone ahead and unzipped it. And what we have is a start commander.bat file. Fantastic, I think I might just click on that. If I do, what will happen is it'll start up Tomcat and then we'll be able to begin the fun. Okay, so now we see that the server has started up. Great. If this hasn't opened automatically for you, uh, you can go to the web apps by going to localhost 8084 slash commander. This will then bring you to this lovely login page in which if you type in demo demo, you will log in to the web apps. The one that we're most concerned about is cockpit. If you log in there, you should see that there's a whole bunch of test data here already including if I go into processes, you'll see that there's a list of processes. Now, the next thing I want to do is actually to start, uh, is deploy a new process that I want to manipulate myself. And I'm going to do that next. Doing that is going to involve the command of modeler, which of course we downloaded earlier. So let's get our opportunity to do that now by opening that up. We're going to create a bpman file and we're going to create a simple um, process that was suggested to you by Morgendorfer, which is about feeding hawks. So we're going to feed a hawk, um, or maybe start event should say a uh, hawk is hungry. And we're going to feed the hawk um, a classic uh, hawk meal, which is uh, a corgi. Feed hawk corgi. Um, they prefer smaller dogs that can't get away very easily, so corgis are ideal. And then hawk is fed. Great. I just need now to give this a name, hawk, hawk. And now I'm going to deploy it to um, my uh, local instance. You can see the rest endpoint here. So let's deploy. Great. So that's done. And if I should refresh this and then see it, there is our process. 
Now, at this point, I would quite like to start the process, but those familiar with Cockpit realize that this is a huge pain because while I would much, much rather just click a button right here and deploy the process, I can't do that. I have to go to task list which is a different application. I then need to go to my start process. I then need to find a hawk. I then need to click start. I then need to go back to cockpit. And I then need to go back to my processes. And then the hawk. And then I am at this point where I can see my process instance. This is far too much work for me. I am a person who likes to do things in one or two clicks maximum. And therefore, I am going to create this plugin that's going to make this whole process much, much easier. So let's get started with that. And here we are. We are now at the crux of this tutorial where we actually want to build our cockpit plugin. So to do that, we need to go back to the distribution we downloaded earlier, which is right here where we would have clicked start commodity.batch. Now follow me, my friends, as we dip into a deep, deep journey into the file structure of this download because we will start with server. Then we'll go into Apache Tomcat. Then we're going to go into web apps. Then Commander, because the Commander web apps are stored in here. Uh, we want to go into app. Uh, then we have cockpit task list, admin, and welcome. These are the web apps that are deployed. The one we want to play around with is cockpit. Cockpit has a script folder. We're almost there. And here we have the place where we want to do our work. And we start off with the config.js. Uh, Not bad. So what we want to do now is create a plugin right in here. We're going to create a new file called startinstance.js because that is the name of our plugin because we want to start an instance. So startinstance.js is what we're calling it. We do indeed want to call it that. We trust ourselves. And now it's time to actually get to work. So I'm going to open up um, my lovely editor here, um, uh, Visual Studio Code. And you can see we have a config file. We're in the right folder. We have our start instance, which is totally empty. And now I actually want to put the... Um, the the various bits of code in there. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is export default. Open some brackets. Great. And now let's build our plugin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, an ID for the plugin. So the first thing the plugin needs is an ID. My demo plugin is a terrible ID, but it's the one I'm going to go for. Um, the next thing we actually want to do is far more important, and that is actually add the location of where this plugin goes. So if I go back to the website here, I'm going to go to um, uh, the plugins documentation. You see plugin points is actually a really well documented part of this. Now, you can see here that each of these plugin points has shown where exactly you can plug into by this highlighted area. Now, me specifically, I would quite like to uh, plug in right here along the side. So you can see here, plugin process definition runtime action is where I want to put my plugin. So let me return here, and I just need to put in here the location where the plugin goes, which is that location. So if you wanted to plug in somewhere else, you can go ahead and do that. Now for the first iteration here, I'm not going to do too much more than just um, uh, add a, um, uh, a, a rendered button that doesn't do anything, just so we can see something that shows up. So let's take a look at the, that. I'm going to copy and paste this to save myself some time typing um, or typing badly as the case may be. And you can see that we're just going to render. We have IP, API, which is very important, which we'll talk about later on. The process definition, which again we get because of the location of where this plugin is going to be. And all we're doing here is adding a really simple button that doesn't do too much. It's just a little button that does nothing. So that's our first step. Um, I then just need to add this and I'm going to save this and now we sh we have our plugin and the important thing to do now is actually tell cockpit that it actually needs to load this and for that we're going to the only other file in this directory which is the config file now this is detailed already but it's good to show you right here at the very very top it says custom scripts and it has some stuff so let's uncomment this line and we can see that what I would like, it says here that if you have a folder called my custom scripts in cockpit, then you would use that and so on and so forth. We know exactly where our uh, folder is. It's actually in the same location as we currently are. So I'm going to um, get rid of that. And I'm just going to put in scripts start instance.js because it's going to find the same 
thing as right here. So if all of this works, we should be able to go back and refresh the page and see a little button. Let's try it now. I'm going to go back to my web browser. I'm going to go back to cockpit. And it's important now, I'm actually going to refresh. And uh, in Opera, I'm going to hold shift to make sure that I clear the cache. And oh, look, we have a cool button. Amazing, look at that. Who would have thought? That button is a little bit uninteresting. It doesn't look good and it doesn't do anything. So that is the next thing we're going to change. So let's start with making it look a lot better. There's nothing going on there at all. And if we take a look at the code, the button itself doesn't really it's the, there's no real life to it. So instead, I'm going to use the awesome power of corgis. Again, I'm going to this time open this up. I'm going to put a corgi uh, a corgi dot gif file right in there in uh, our scripts folder, and then I'm going to change the button a bit. So if I go in here, I'm going to replace this with a very similar but importantly different. It's got now a tag that says corgi dot gif very very important so this will actually make it seem a little more interesting um so that is going to change the way it looks so let's click save and let's again refresh okay we have our corgi fantastic look at that look at him running around the place happy little chap he is um now if i'm going to open the developer console for a moment um, and i'm going to see right here in the console if i click this literally nothing happens so let's add some very basic functionality to our uh, cockpit plugin uh, you can see here that on click function for button is empty and so i'm going to do the most basic thing i can think of which is just print something to the console so i'm going to add this node on click function just say hi um, and save that and then return here and i'm going to refresh this page keep the console open and the reason i have that is because now this button says hi multiple times three times in fact four times so much saying hi and that's what we're doing now. Now, that while that is lovely and very friendly, it is not really why we're here. The next thing I'm going to do is some actual interesting communication to the engine from this cockpit plugin. Specifically, I want to start this process. So let's do that next. Now, if I want to actually start a process, a good idea would be to actually take a look at the documentation to find out how that is done. Now, I have it open right here to start a process via the REST API. You can see here that what we need is we need to make a post call. We need the process definition ID, and then we need to start. So if we were to do that from the... Um, from the plugin, we actually need to know what the definition ID is, and we also need to know the location of the REST endpoint. Now, luckily, that is something that we actually have access to. So let's just open back up our code, and we will say goodbye to the wonderful saying hello uh, um, code that we wrote. Goodbye, you served us well. I'm going to add a whole chunk of new code. Now, let me explain this line by line. So. First of all, we needed the REST endpoint. Luckily, this API object that I talked about earlier gives us access to the engine's API. And once we have that, we then simply add process definition to the end of it, which is what the REST API is expecting. Now, another thing I mentioned is this thing here, process definition ID. Now, because of where we've actually put the button and because of the plugin point, we all, we get that uh, um, that ID as part of as a part of the input, and we can then add that to the REST call. And then it's just down to the method of post. Uh, we don't need a body. And then also, very importantly, we actually use the API to get the certificate token so we can actually securely make this REST call. So let's save that. And now let's head back here. Let's refresh this page. Now, when I click this button, what's going to happen is, hopefully, is it's going to start a new instance. Great. Now, did it? probably we will find out because we actually need to refresh the page because it might have started the instance but we haven't refreshed the page yet if i refresh hurrah we now have two instances in fact if i start it again click the button click refresh we should have a third we do indeed but that is way too much work we actually should be able to click the button start an instance and then navigate the user who clicked the button to the instance they just started which is what we'll do next Doing that is going to actually involve a very small and adorably hacky little um, addition to our existing script. So we now have this lovely thing. After this has been successful, I want to redirect the user to a different page. And this, of course, is very, very easy because we just need to add this thing right there. So this says, after we get a result um, back, we're actually going to use the ID of the process 
that started to actually manipulate the URL to move to that location. So you can see here that this is kind of hard coded. It would need a little more work to work um, uh, correctly, but it's it'll, it's good enough for this. And you can see that we basically take and then we add that to the uh, URL. So let's see if that works. If I save that and then I refresh this lovely page again. Again, I'm using clearing the cache and I click on the Corgi. <gasps> There we have it. We started an instance and you can see here the buttons have changed. We now have the correct location for that. So if we head back and try it again, we now have four instances started. If I click this one more time, there we are. This is our fifth instance. We have gone right to the page where that instance um, uh, exists. So that is us successfully creating a cockpit plugin that does some fun stuff and also feeds a hawk.